With almost a million people to consider, Bristol is facing up to its challenges and doing some things differently in terms of waste, water and power, but in other areas too. And its green lead and approach to innovation has encouraged international ethical companies to plant their UK roots in Bristol soil. When we opened in the UK in 1995, we had to make a choice about where to move. Bristol was a green hub and a centre for green business. Bristol was really grown to be a centre for green excellence. As well as attracting ethical businesses from abroad, Bristol has a long track record for growing its own. As well as designing an innovative straw bale building system for Triodos, the sustainable architecture group White Design built this straw bale centre for community media in a deprived area of the city and designed the eco-refurbishment of this restaurant. But Bristol is not just about new build. It has a proud history and some grand civic and domestic architecture to prove it. Some of the Victorian infrastructure now needs replacing to reduce water leakage and improve resilience in the face of climate change. The water utility company has a broad portfolio spanning much of the region. It looks after birds and fish stocks, reservoirs and treatment works. And in an innovative project with one of our universities, it's looking to find the most effective ways to reduce water consumption by using students who live on campus to test out different ideas. We're using the student village in an experimental way. This is a national database that's collecting together studies from all across the UK to better inform the entire sector uh, with respect to what works and what doesn't work uh, in the business of water conservation. Across the campus, a partnership between the city's two universities is leading the world in the field of microbial fuel cells, using microbes to generate electricity from waste organic matter. We have been using dead insects and even human urine. It's turning waste into something useful. Uh, and that electricity, we can use it for robots, we can use it for standalone applications, we can use it for anything. This is the first in the world to power a working prototype. Ten years ago, 85% of Bristol's waste used to end up in landfill. Not anymore. Bristol is now zero waste to landfill and over 50% is recycled or composted. What isn't separated by citizens for recycling ends up here at this new treatment plant. Firstly, there's a second chance at recycling, where valuable commodities are pulled out for reuse. Then, instead of incinerating or burying the rest, what's left is turned into gas, which creates electricity. This unique technology has been developed in Bristol in the last two years. The project will create enough power for 25,000 local homes. In Bristol, we've also been experimenting with familiar technology like photovoltaic cells and generating power for the people that people actually own themselves encouraging whole streets to take up solar at the same time. We formed a cooperative and the co-op is of people who put their roofs into the scheme. And the co-op arranges the finance, so we put solar on people's roofs and we can provide people with cheaper electricity. This is part of a cluster of solutions aimed at creating a gigawatt of community-owned solar across the city. And we're going to need as much renewable electricity as we can get if the city is to follow the lead of the newly elected mayor and do much of its driving by electric car. Part of his personal leadership commitment to ensuring the city goes beyond the European 2020 campaign targets of reduced greenhouse gases, increased use of renewables and an improvement in energy efficiency. Bristol is always looking to innovate in transport and recently launched this hydrogen-powered passenger ferry across the harbour attracting interest from cities looking to replicate the idea. And this VW Beetle is powered purely from waste, a project that has brought the attention of the world's media that we've been working on for some years in Bristol. The biomethane created by biodigesting human waste from waste water treatment also powers the plant itself. The latest development is that the process will now take the city's commercial food waste food that may have been delivered to cafes sustainably, bought with the city's own currency, maybe using the unique text-to-pay scheme. And any waste gathered up is being sent sustainably for reuse. 
This closed-loop economic transaction is typical of life in Bristol, where leadership in the green agenda comes from the people, the businesses who serve them, and from partnerships between public bodies and the private sector, which look after waste, water, power and civic amenities.